So this is Emil. He um, is almost eight months old now, and he was present for um, a lot of the testing that we did. He was also present for the launch in utero. <laughs> and so over the course of the our first ISS project, we made an entire new human, <laughs> along, along with um, all the other testing that we did. This um, flight suit that he's wearing was from his auntie power stew that we got um, when we were down at Cape Canaveral for the launch in December. I know that's my favorite face he makes right now. <laughs> this is gonna be top teeth. <laughs> So we were running concurrent experiments on Earth and on station. So NanoRacks had gels at their facility and they were getting the data from the experiments running on station. And so we were looking at how the gels formed their structure and also how the drug release profile was changing given those two different environments. NanoRacks brought the plates back to us and we all uh, made sure that we are here and we um, opened the, the plates all together and we had the same type of excitement that we had at uh, Kennedy Space Center. It was already exciting because space never loses its cool and so we had these plates where we're like, oh my god, these are what the astronauts touched. And so we opened them and they've been to space and back and now they're in our lab. We could just at least look at them and see like how the integrity is different, if the structural uh, changes are something that we can observe just by looking at the gel. And when we looked at the data that we got from um, the equipment on station and the equipment from NanoRacks, we could see that there are differences in the drug release profiles from those gels that were happening at the same time. We actually observed some uh, interesting changes that we hope that we will be able to prove uh, doing actual structural tests and uh, more in-depth studies. But just by observation, it seemed like there might be some changes. <laughs> While the thrill of the rocket launch may be over, Elaine and Peristu still have one of the most exciting parts of their journey ahead, publishing their results. This information could help inform future research on Earth and in space. What we're working on now is compiling on that data and telling a good story around it so that it's something that we can, of course, publish and give back to the public. So we got some really interesting data from these experiments that were, again, super simple, but the story it might tell us could really inform material science as a whole. You definitely feel a huge responsibility performing this research for others because you know how many years they've been working on the ground and we often like to know the results so personally I stayed in touch with a lot of the scientists and that gives us a lot of good feedback and it gives us some closure too to know how important the science that we were doing up there really was. I think Rachel yeah. has something for you guys. Yeah. They said, hey, we'd like to try and set up a, at least a FaceTime call or something. And oh, uh, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. This is great. Oh, that's, that's a fantastic, fantastic surprise. Fun. Where are you guys located? So we're in our laboratory in Richmond, Virginia. So our other uh, full-time employees are also women. So we're an entirely women-run awesome. company. Fantastic. Uh, it, just, it just turned out that way, but it's been wonderful because we're all uh, women engineers. <laughs> this is ours. Oh, this is great. This is I'm going to show you the plate that you handled in space. We still have it. <laughs> we still have our samples. Oh, that's so cool. See, it's even neat when we get to see the science back down in your hands, too. So, sometimes it does go literally in a black box when we're up there and we hope everything goes down safely. So, but thanks for letting me uh, invade your space a little bit today and uh, good luck with everything you guys do scientifically, personally, professionally in the future. All right, thank you so much, Serena. Cool. Yeah. All right, it's good to see you guys. Yeah, very thank nice you. to meet you. And happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard uh, to beat this. Oh, I don't think, I'm trying to think of anything that would be better than watching my own launch of a research to the space station. I actually have like my background of my cell phone is actually like the picture of us sending the product to space station. Definitely a lot of people are surprised uh, that young uh, 
females and STEM have uh, you know, this type of experiences and have uh, contributed this much. And I still look at the sky and I really think everything is so far away and like um, look at the stars and everything looks like nothing is achievable. But then just being a part of this uh, whole experience, it just is a dream come true. Elaine and Peristu now join the thousands of scientists who've performed research aboard the International Space Station, making the most of what microgravity has to teach us. This dedicated group is bringing what they learn back to Earth, helping improve lives and advance exploration. What Space Station gives us is a different sort of laboratory, and what's Really meaningful to me is to be able to come back down and talk with my patients and let them know about some of the discoveries we made. This means a lot to me as a clinician, and so it was really neat to be able to perform that sort of science on station. The energy that everyone has who's involved in space research is extremely contagious, and so you just get hyped up about it because everyone else is so excited about it. Yes, the timelines are long, but everyone is so positive and certain that they're doing a good thing and that the money is well spent. And that is what drives people to keep doing this sort of research. Microgravity still has more insights to reveal. And this laboratory, like no other, will continue to uncover them, one experiment at a time. <laughs>